Hello everyone and welcome back to the Barely Boyish Podcast. Today we are continuing on continuing on with Wuthering Heights, and I'm once again joined by Jen from In Her Good Books. Hello. Man, do we have a lot to talk about? <laughs> I'm so happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this this chunk of the book and then the, the one that we'll be talking about on the next episode are my favorite things of all time. Yeah. Like, very soap opera-ish right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't love drama in my life, but I really love reading it in this book. <laughs> I love other people's drama. Yes. It, um, oh, it just it makes me so full of joy. And mm-hmm. I'm just laughing along in my life as I'm listening to it in my ears. It's so good. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we are on chapter six uh we start off mr henley rolls up with a wife and i was like oh i okay. didn't even re- i didn't even remember that he was gone <laughs> yeah i also <laughs> kind of forgot he was gone i forgot about um, him i think yeah like he goes to college and then the dad dies and he comes home and has a wife and everyone's mm-hmm. like oh okay and she's like really sickly and yeah, waifish. She, and she's also like a ray of sunshine, which is mm-hmm. adorable. Yeah, so everyone, well, I don't say everyone really likes her, but she really wants everyone to like her. She's mm-hmm. the, her trying to talk to Catherine is hilarious. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, but. First off, is this lady just bawling her eyes out because she sees everyone wearing black and she's like, one day I might die. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, she's too delicate. Mm-hmm. I'm not, she's not too delicate. People are allowed to be delicate, but she's very much more delicate than this household. Mm-hmm. Like, she's basically living in a shameless household, you know, like shameless TV show. Mm-hmm. Living in that situation, and she is but a flower. <laughs> yes. Do we ever hear her name? I, I think don't she think so. I don't think so either. So I'm pretty sure the only people who have names are the ones that have H names, and then Catherine's mm-hmm. in the whole book. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Well, we get Edgar's name, Edgar. Is it Lipton? Because I keep saying Lipton like the T. Linton. Linton. Lipton I, works though too. <laughs> I know. I I think I might just be craving tea, not gonna lie to you, but <laughs> So Henley uh sends Heathcliff outside and says he's now a laborer. <laughs> <laughs> and Heathcliff goes along with it. <laughs> Like, I just imagine that your brother you haven't seen in, like, years. Your dad dies and he rolls up. He's like, all right, I'm man of the house now. My house. Get outside, you peasant. And everyone's like, oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, may as well go along with it, I guess. Yeah. And Heathcliff doesn't really put up that much of a fight. I just think he's bizarre. like, whatever. Like, what else was I going to do with my day, I guess? That's true. He's kind of adaptable. <laughs> yeah. He rolls with it. Yeah. Until he doesn't anymore. But that's not yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I also don't think I'd put up with it at all, ever, to be honest. Like, I don't think I would have been like, yeah, sure, let me just leave all my fine, fancy clothes inside and... I'm gonna go sit in the farm now. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely not. Like you would be hard pressed, hard pressed to get me to go outside and work on a farm. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I I would, but I would be doing it for my own joy and not because my brother kicked me out. I like gardening. <laughs> I don't There's a difference like... for sure. <laughs> yeah, like I I'm not gonna tend to a horse. You know what I mean. No. Like that thing's bigger than I am, and I'm not. I'm not going to be involved with that situation. No, I don't blame you. Horses are scary. 
Yeah, I respect them from a distance. I think they're pretty. Um, I'm not. I'm not gonna go brush out a horse. No. 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 So then the lady telling the story, Mrs. Dean is like, "Yeah, the kids deserve to be abused because they're not well behaved." <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sometimes she- the things that she says. I was like, what? But I think yeah. it's funny because she's also the one telling the whole story. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like, how reliable are you, Mrs. Teen? <laughs> Literally. And like the other thing too is that like it she's basically their age. So like yeah. she's taking care of them. But like imagine if you put a 15 year old in charge of another 15 year old. It would not go well. No. Like you expect someone to be more mature than the other person they're watching out for? No. No. Um, oh, what was I going to say? I don't know. Never mind. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about this whole situation and her being in charge and everything. I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. No, I don't. I don't. I don't agree. I mean, I agree with you. I don't agree with the situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Heathcliff and uh, like basically let Catherine get captured by this family that they were making fun of. They like creep over there in the middle of the night, sit outside their windows, and laugh at them for being like spoiled. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They go to Thrushcross Grange, mm-hmm. which is the only house anywhere near them. Mm-hmm. But if they're the only house anywhere near them, I feel like they would have gone over there eventually, anyways, because. Heathcliff and Catherine are just these wild kids that just play outside all day together. But like imagine your kid literally just likes going for walks. And you're like, wow, what a wild child. <laughs> I know. That's right. the energy I'm getting. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, they just look up in their windows, see them eating sitting by the fire and they're like what a bunch of losers (laughs) (laughs) the other thing is they did like injure a puppy and that was sad yeah but like also they're just like very spoiled children and uh then they capture Catherine they make Heathcliff come inside and they're like what is this gypsy child like (laughs) doing and i'm like why are we calling this kid a gypsy but okay but yeah there's a just... very there's Sorry. a very long passage of them just outlining all the reasons why he's a gypsy yeah and I th- it's, it's uncomfortable gypsy's a slur in here though right yeah. Yeah. yeah well it definitely is now and there it was too so yeah um yeah just because it was kind of like darker in skin color I was like, oh, no, don't do that. (laughs) This kid got a tan from being outside and they're like, call the police. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, Catherine got attacked by a dog that saw Mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then she's she's so sick that she has to stay there for five weeks. Yeah, because they like busted her ankle too so she gets like sick and her ankle busted by this dog biting her and then they're like all right i guess you have to live here now but (laughs) like like the houses are i think they describe it as four miles apart or something like it's not mm -hmm. i mean it's the olden days so you'd have to go on a horse but surely someone could have went and got her or brought her home in that time (laughs) (laughs) i mean have you ever sprained your ankle before no okay i have pretty bad (laughs) and i'll like i'll say this i you would not have caught me hobbling it on a horse like (laughs) that thing hurt i sat in a rolly chair for like two weeks straight with that thing because i never went to the doctor or anything because that costs money Mm -hmm. and i just was like i'll suffer through it but i couldn't put any weight on it at all um i had to go down one like tiny little step to get into my parents shower and like I had to like hop it and I couldn't make that happen so I had to like crawl on there yeah 
Yeah, I, if they told me to get on the horse and buggy, I'd be like, no. I'll <laughs> no. stay here, actually. Well, I think the Lintons have a carriage, so I think someone could have made it happen. But... Yeah. I feel yes, like the no, bouncing. I, I believe. Mm-mm. Mm, I don't know. Maybe. There was one time recently where I was going down the stairs and my ankle just kind of like clicked weird or like twinged. Mm, yeah. And I was like, this is the end of me. I could <laughs> not... I was like, I'm falling down the stairs now. There's no way that I can live through this. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, I I understand. I could not. I couldn't put my weight on my ankle in that moment. So, yeah, actual injury. Okay. Yeah, I also think she's just like probably gonna fake it for a bit for the fact mm-hmm. that she does not want to go home. And no. I, I feel that. I get it. Yeah. I mean, the, they do have a mansion, and they are rich, and that is much nicer. Plus, when she does come back, she's now refined. Mm-hmm. So she got her education there in five weeks of how to be a lady. I like the idea that they basically sent her back with, like, Gucci bags. And they're like... <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> they sent her back to her middle-class family with, like... Louis Vuittons and Gucci bags and they're like all right go back and blend back in <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you have to carry on like this even if you can't afford it literally so um Henley's pissed that Catherine got stuck there and uh decides to put Heathcliff on even a, a tighter leash than ever before once uh, Catherine turns home. He's like, you're not allowed to see her. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> Come on. What? Like, you guys live in the same house. How's that going to work? So then we're on to chapter seven. So, as we mentioned, Kathy stays at the neighbor's house for five full weeks. Um, and even when she gets home, her attitude's supposedly approved, improved. Heathcliff's still a wild child, and now Henley's calling him a servant. Like, imagine this kid you're, like, fully raised with, and then suddenly, like, one day you're just like, yeah, no, just kidding. Like, Yeah. Henley's, uh, he's actually pretty much the worst. Yeah. I hope he gets killed off soon. Um, okay. Yes, eventually that will happen. Yeah. Not I hope soon Heathcliff enough. Heathcliff but... kills him. That's my <laughs> That's my hope for this book. So Catherine gets home. Heathcliff has not bathed in weeks. And that's <laughs> pretty much the whole time she was gone. <laughs> <laughs> like I like the idea that he's basically doing the elephant thing where you do like dust baths. <laughs> yes. He's just out in the stables where he's where he now lives mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just Sleeping on hay and all that. Yeah. So, uh, Heathcliff's taking it super seriously that he's not allowed to see Kathy. He won't even go and see her when um, Henley's not watching, which I just think is interesting. Like, I don't really understand his point here. I don't know if it's to keep himself from being punished or what the plan is. Like, I don't... I don't know. They... Catherine and Heathcliff have a pretty toxic relationship. Yeah. Though I love it. It's okay. But I think he's kind of like, he's punishing her. She went away. She left him. Yeah. And now look what you've done to me. I am this heathen. <laughs> you know, I will not spend time with you. I will not allow it, you know. And she's like, why blah 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 so i I think that i think that's it but (laughs) probably probably he's like he's being very dramatic about it he's like not answering anybody he's just brushing a horse (laughs) yeah yeah so the linton family comes over heathcliff decides that he's gonna shower and he's gonna make it up to kathleen they're gonna gather and they're gonna be friends Everything's going to go back to the way it was. Really? He just wants to look better than Edgar. Edgar. Oh, yeah. 100%. He's like, oh, He's... crap. <laughs> now the prince is coming over and I look like this. 
it's not like funny he's, anymore. <laughs> he's doing his whole like workout montage, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. You know, in like teen dramas when they like the photo pinned to the dartboard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Basketball hoop, one corner dartboard with Edgar's face on it the other <laughs> yeah you will defeat him oh yeah so then Heathcliff runs into Henley before he can even make it into the gathering room Henley loses his mind and he's like you're not allowed to go in there absolutely not like you're a servant now and Heathcliff's like bro what and then Edgar walks in the room and it's like, oh yeah, your hair is like really messy. And he could just take a like, what I'm assuming is like a boiling pot of <laughs> hot applesauce and just overturns it to him, like fully sloshes <laughs> it onto his face. <laughs> that is exactly what happened. Except for then he wasn't actually injured. And I was like, come on, <laughs> he would so have a burn funny. on him somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, full temper tantrum. I love, I love when someone gets, like, a drink board on them. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, whenever in a movie, TV show, whatever, a girl finds out her boyfriend's been cheating on her, or her husband's been cheating on her, whatever, and she just takes a drink and throws it in his face, Oh Yeah, so good. So good. I think I like it even more if someone, they just pour it over their head slowly, and they just sit there and take it, because they know. That's also good. I deserve this. <laughs> also good. I, yeah, something about that moment's even better, to be honest. Yeah. Because it's just the no reaction and just like the falling and yeah. being like, damn. Damn. But hot applesauce, that's pretty extreme. <laughs> <sighs> oh. And Kathy's just like, either. Catherine's like, why did you. Why did you make him mad? Yeah. <laughs> why? Why are you doing this to him? I was like, dude, <laughs> he needs to chill. <laughs> I mean, Edgar is kind of a ass, but yeah, still hot applesauce. That's serious. Like this kid could have gone like seriously burned and <laughs> whatever, you know? Yep, disfigured, killed, maybe, <laughs> depending on. <laughs> how much was thrown and where, but yeah. Heathcliff would have been like, yeah, redeemed. (laughs) So then as if nothing at all happened, everyone except Heathcliff sits down for dinner very casually. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, Heathcliff says he's planning his revenge on Henley that night. And he's like, one day, I'm going to get revenge and I hope I can do it before he dies. And I'm like, damn. Okay. Yeah. See, this is when you treat your servants and your brothers badly and then continue to live in the same house as them with no help (laughs) anywhere around you. (laughs) It's risky. (laughs) Literally, literally. And soon he starts threatening to kill everyone. I'm like, "Mm." (laughs) Be nice to Heathcliff. <laughs> Literally. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, Mrs. Dean is trying to just skip through all the juicy details. She's like, all right, that's enough of that. And Lockwood's like, no, sit back down. Yeah, no. Sit She's like, I'm going to skip down. ahead three years. And he's like, how about not? <laughs> yeah, how about you don't do that? And she's like, okay, if you want to gossip more. And he's like, yes, please. Please sit yeah. back down. Yeah. <laughs> so then we are on to chapter eight Hinley's wife is ill uh because she gave birth to a son which is apparently how every woman has to go out i guess pretty much yes yeah so uh Hinley's trying to convince the world that she's not dying like she's literally wayfish and he's like you're strong and full of life yeah and she's like i can't breathe the doctor's like she only has a little like a month to live and he's like um no, no. <laughs> actually not <laughs> sorry that's just incorrect i don't really know what <laughs> yeah. to tell you here up until like her actual last breath 
<laughs> which you know i guess it's not reasonable but understandable he yeah. he actually like, he was a terrible man but he mm-hmm. apparently loved his wife so that's nice at least i mean i guess it's one thing he's got going for him i guess so so um the baby's name is Herit- harrington 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 yeah like keratin Yes, the hair treatment, but okay. with hair, <laughs> with hair. Um, once the baby died, not the baby. Sorry, once the wife died, the baby completely becomes Mrs. Dean's problem. He wants nothing to do with this baby at all. No, I mean, I guess it's hard if your partner dies to like look at the kid, you know. Yeah, but I think it's probably especially in the eighteen hundreds when you're not usually the one that's supposed to be doing anything with them as the father <laughs> yeah you know but yeah he extra was like no get that kid yeah. away from me pretty much like one hand immediately to mrs dean <laughs> yeah so at this point he has driven all of the servants out all that are left is mrs dean and joseph <laughs> and apparently heathcliff i guess yeah <laughs> Yes. Uh, Joseph, once again, throughout these chapters, could not understand a single thing he was saying. Nope. Nope. I have zero clue. <laughs> not even. Not, I couldn't even. So. Picked up at one point, he tried to insinuate that Heathcliff might be in a ditch, and that's all I got. <laughs> like, it was like, religious nonsense, religious nonsense, religious nonsense, moving on. Yeah, yeah. So, pretty much just skipped him again, as usual. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, uh, Edgar Linton uh, is the only one who keeps visiting after uh, Henley has drived literally everyone away. Like, all of their neighbors, all of their friends, every single person. Yep. Um, Catherine is actively stuck between Edgar and Heathcliff, and they do not like each other at all. And she's trying to be, quote, friends, unquote, with both of them. <laughs> So, uh, Mrs. Dean said Heathcliff stopped learning and basically has turned into a complete slop since all he does is work all the time. Yeah, I guess he tried to keep up with his studies a little bit to keep up with Catherine, but it was impossible. I mean, when you're, like, being forced to be a laborer. Yeah. What what downtime are you gonna... Yeah, what time are you gonna have? You don't have any downtime. Yeah. So, um, Heathcliff comes inside and he's like, oh, hey, Catherine, you want to hang out? And why do you look so nice? And Catherine's like, you need to go back outside. Go do labor. (laughs) Go do anything else. And he's like, we literally don't hang out at all anymore. Like, I have a calendar going of all the days you hang out with Edgar and all the days you hang out with me. (laughs) And if you see right here, oh, look, that's none. None for me. (laughs) actual calendar hanging on the wall behind her <laughs> like oh my god i'm just imagining every time she leaves the room he like puts a cross on it <laughs> no and she's kind of like well you don't have anything to say and you're just dumb so why would i want to hang out with you anyways I'm like Catherine, you are such a jerk <laughs> like what 15 year old mean girl energy we're getting right yeah, now oh yes for sure like, I keep forgetting that she is actively 15. Yeah. So, when you th- went, because when I was reading it, and she was, I think, like, 13, when the dog mm-hmm. bit her kind of thing, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. These are actual kids. These are children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are this? Like, I always think it's so funny when you're reading, um, like, older books like this. When they're like, yeah, I'm a grown woman. I need to get married. And it's like, you're like 16. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's like, no, let's just wait 10 years. Oh, wait. Then you're old. (laughs) You're an old spinster by then. Yeah. I'm 27 years old. I got no money. No prospects. (laughs) Yeah. Kathy gets mad that Mrs. Dean is cleaning in the room while her and Edgar are hanging out. And she's like actively trying to get herself alone with him and i'm like girl 
<laughs> no. Yeah, well, she's supposed to kind of, like, chaperone them or something, but mm-hmm. she's like, but well, I'm not just going to sit here and do nothing. I'm going to do my duties. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I got a job to do. I don't have time to just hang out with you. Yeah. So then Kathy pinches her. Mrs. Dean decides this is her opportune time. Screams bloody murder. Shows the welt to Edgar, who's then like, oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) This is really awkward. (laughs) Yeah. And now Harrington is crying. uh, Because Mrs. Dean is crying. Everybody's yelling. Edgar's like, alright, I'm gonna go. And I'm not coming back. <laughs> Kathy starts bawling. And then he's she's like, I I can't believe you're gonna leave me. And he Edgar falls for it. Yeah. Uh and now they're in love. <laughs> yes. That sealed the bond between them. Her yeah. huge tantrum and violent act. Because <laughs> oh, Mrs. Yeah. Dean was like I thought this would be a chance to show him what she was really like. She's like, but dang it, it brought them closer. (laughs) Like, it's already formulating to me that uh, that uh, Edgar's probably going to be a terrible person, so. Yeah, he's (laughs) he gets kind of funny. He's something. He's something, (laughs) all right. Just, Just wait. So then we are on to chapter nine. So when Hindley gets home, uh, Dean, Mrs. Dean has to go hide Harrington in a cupboard so that he does not see him. And I'm like, oh, oh no. That's not great. No. No. Like, he's like level 10 abusive. Yeah. So. Well, I think he becomes... A drunk and gambles yeah. and is just all around not he's already he started off not good and then his wife died yeah. and he really took a turn <laughs> yeah so then he starts telling mrs dean that he's planning to kill every member of this family with a gun and we're all <laughs> supposed to be cool with that yeah and mrs Apparently. dean's like probably not i don't think you will do that and he's like no i'm going to in your bed tonight you know (laughs) he's like telling her his great plan and then he's also like also give me my son and mrs dean's like "Mm, no 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 yeah and then he just like yanks harrington out of the cupboard uh harrington's actively trying to escape he ends up dropping this kid quote accidentally unquote um off the banister down to like the first floor just so happens Heathcliff oh sorry no keep going (laughs) just so happens Heathcliff standing underneath it and catches this kid but he almost killed his son that's insane that's very stressful yeah (sighs) and then Mrs. Dean like makes a side remark about how if it was nighttime, Heathcliff probably would have let the kid die. I was like, what? Um, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, ma'am, what? But then again, she's telling the story. She's flourishing it as she will she you have you know i think she was around for a lot of stuff like yeah. there's no way she could be around for all of these instances yeah i mean i guess there's only the two servants in the entire house so she kind of has to be around everything maybe but because i mean what's joseph doing honestly what is he doing <laughs> like he's just i don't like, it doesn't seem like anybody's running their household so Somebody, they need to get rid of Joseph. Definitely get rid of Henley. Yeah. And then maybe things would be okay. Like, I feel like they're implying that they are, like, farmers or something, based on the kind of work that Heathcliff is having to do. But, like, 
so if they lost their entire staff, like Heathcliff's got to be pulling all nighters. Like, what is happening? What are they doing? You know? Yeah. And if they're like living out on the moors, it doesn't really seem like a more like a good farmland. Yeah, I don't know if they're actually oh, farmers, but if they implied like he's going outside to work. Yeah. It's got to be something. Yeah, I don't, and I don't really know what's going on. Hareton, how old is this baby <laughs> that's being pulled yeah, and thrown I... at this point? So if she went to L- L- Lipton's at 13, like this baby's probably about a year, a year and a half at this yeah, point. Because we like know that. what... When she gets married, he's five. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So then, um, Heathcliff and Dean, and uh, Mrs. Dean, end up going to Mrs. Dean's room. Heathcliff decides to like lay down on the couch and basically like chill out from the events of the day. Um, as he's laying down, and she's by the door Kathy walks in and she's like hey you alone and like Miss D basically like kind of looks back and it's like yeah <laughs> oh I'm my like, gosh okay. yeah doesn't uh, go that good so uh, Mrs. Dean lies and is like yeah come on in whatever and then she like reiterates to Lockwood who's listening to this entire story that she like actively hates Catherine. She's like, also remember, I hate her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh yes. Yes, she so does. Kathy's like, hey, can you keep a secret? And Mrs. Steen basically out of the corner of eye looks at Heathcliff. And she's like, Yeah, sure. She's like, Yeah, Edgar proposed, um, and you just need to not tell anybody. And we're like, oh, oh. And she's like, I want your opinion on if I made the right decision by accepting him. And, like, Mrs. Dean's like, do you, like, love him? And she's like, well, I like that he's young and rich. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what are the reasons? All these reasons like that. But, yeah, but why do you love him? Well, everything that I just said. Young, rich, nice. Yeah. <laughs> like, hmm. Well, if you think those are good reasons to marry someone, then, yes, you're making the right choice. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she's like, and then I also feel like it's a bad idea. She's like, why would you think it's a bad idea? And she's like, well, I can't ever marry Heathcliff. Heathcliff leaves. She's like, but I'm in she, love with him. Yeah, she says, uh, what was it? Marrying him would degrade me. Marrying Heathcliff <laughs> would degrade me or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, immediately Heathcliff is gone. Yep. And then she goes As on this should. long tangent about how much she loves him. Yeah. Dang it. <laughs> Shoot. I- I've heard that saying though, uh, that line where she says that our souls are are the same or something. Yeah, the best quote ever. Mm-hmm. Well, I've heard I that. So my many room, times. my romantic heart. It goes. What is it? Oh well, there's two in this whole speech that are the best. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, he shall never know that I love him and that not because he's handsome, but because he's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. So good. I yeah. love it. I feel like I've heard that so many times. Yeah, it's like the famous line. And then there's this one. If all else if all else perished and he remained, I should still continue to be. And if all else remained and he were annihilated, the universe would turn to a mighty stranger. Those are the two famous Wuthering Heights lines. Because she just goes into this whole tangent about how they're just they're meant to be and she loves him so much and she would marry him if she could, but she can't and And I think they're both terrible. Yep. But they're I They're also siblings. Them. Yes, they are also kind of siblings. But I love them. I I love their drama love. Mm-hmm. Brings me it's, joy. 
It's always funny being like, okay, you guys are technically siblings, but I guess you're not. So sure, I guess. Definitely grown up as siblings. But oh well. But yikes. <laughs> I guess that's, well, that's, I guess, probably not the reason why she can't marry him. It's more that he's a gypsy and a servant and Hinley would throw them both out. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, Mrs. Dean being terrible this entire time, also. The whole time. She's just like, <laughs> yeah, okay. He deserves better than you, though. <laughs> like, using every opportunity to basically roast her. Yeah. And also, he just walked out of this room. Mm-hmm. Kathy's like, what? When? When did he leave? When did, when did he hear? Yeah. She's like, well... <laughs> Oh, and she tells Mrs. Dean that her entire plan is to marry Edgar and then bring Heathcliff with her and have a two-for-one moment. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, she's gonna help, or, like, take care of Heathcliff. And Mrs. Dean's like, yeah, with your husband's money? Like, he isn't gonna go for that. (laughs) She's like, I don't foresee that working. Um, and then... Mrs. Jean's like, yeah, he could probably just heard all of that, the most of it, you know, everything she could hear. Um, I basically did put a microphone right into his ear, uh, or a headphone right into his ear so that he could hear everything you said, you know, very casually. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Oh, she loses it, though. Catherine she loses is... her mind. Because Heathcliff is gone. Now he's gone. And no one yeah. can find him. Yeah. And it's downpouring because it, it has to be, obviously. Obviously. Um, and it's been months. Nobody's seen him. Doesn't seem to be ever coming back. Um, months later, Edgar's parents died. She moves over to that house. Three years pass. She gets married. Um... Catherine steals Mrs. Dean also. She's like, yeah, "Yeah, you're coming with me. (laughs) Yeah, so Mrs. Dean has been taking care of Harriton this whole time. And now Mm -hmm. they lose each other. And he is just stuck there with Hinley. And it's really sad. Yeah. Um, And then... Mrs. Dean's like, all right, well, that's the end of that. So I'm going to go now. It's late. Good night. Bye. (laughs) Like, enjoy that. And that's how we end the chapter. Yeah. You know, I think um, maybe this is the next part. But Lockwood. Mrs. Dean's like, oh, it's late, so I'm going to be done. And Lockwood's just kind of like, yeah, no. I don't have to be up until. (laughs) Oh, that was the last part. The last one. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't have to be up until like the afternoon, so we're just gonna keep going. She's like, but it's eleven thirty and he's like, Oh well. And I'm like, poor Mrs. Dean. She probably yeah. has to wake up at three AM or something to start the day. <laughs> yeah. She's like Rude. looking at her watch and she's like, If I fell asleep in this chair right now, I could get two hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Dang Lockwood. Such a mm-hmm. wiener. <laughs> But that is all we have for this episode. I am excited to read more, talk about more, get more drama. I can't All the good wait. important stuff. I cannot wait for you to read the next two chapters at least. <laughs> oh, they're so good. Yeah. I'm hype. I'm ready. Me and Shanna were talking on our podcast about it a little bit, about how she hasn't read it yet. But I keep saying that she should. And um, she's like, you're making it sound like it's a comedy. And I'm like, well, it's not. She's like, I've never heard Wuthering Heights described as being funny. I'm like, but it is. But it is. <laughs> but it is. It's so funny. And... I wouldn't say that it's not a comedy. <laughs> it has to be a little bit intentional that this is funny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's got some comedic relief you know you know it's supposed to be this dark romance and it is but it's 
hilarious. Also funny. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. You want to tell the people of the internet where they can find you and all the stuff you're on? Yeah. You guys can find us at In Her Good Books Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And also, you know, look for our podcast, In Her Good Books, wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> And we will catch you all right here in two weeks with another episode of Wuthering Heights. Bye, everybody. Bye.